this show. If a magician wants a slot in Penn & Teller's world-famous magic show and a fancy foolish trophy, they'll have to fool Penn & Teller. And tonight's first magician just might do that. Let's meet them. Foolis completely changed my life. I was still in college when I came on the show, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. Then my act aired right after I graduated. You got 15 tricks here, and they're all really, really good. My phone started to ring and ring. People were wanting to hire me. Magicians that I admired suddenly knew my name. My parents, who love me a lot, suddenly realized that what made me happy could also make me money. What parent doesn't want that for their kid? My next dream was to do a national tour. So I booked one, couch surfing with friends the whole time. Halfway through, it caught fire. I'm ready to do a real tour now. The bottom line for me is this. All magicians are grateful for Fool Us. But I have even more reason to be grateful than most. Tonight is my thank you performance. And if I grab the trophy, I'll say thank you for that too. selected members of our studio audience. Give it up for the magic of Giancarlo Bernini. Oh man, man, it is such a thrill to be back on the show. And I'll be honest, last time I was here, I was nervous. Not so much about the trick I was doing. I was nervous that I wasn't gonna understand Penn and Teller's code words at the end of my act. Because, <laughs> I mean, let's face it, that's a big part of the show. We're all trying to figure out what the heck Penn is saying when he talks in magician speak at the end of someone's performance. So I thought today, I'm gonna show you how a magic trick works. And I'll throw in some Penn and Teller code along the way, that way you all might have a chance of understanding how that code works. Now, exposing magic secrets can be a dangerous thing. You two are very close to the action. So we do have some protective gear for you guys, these safety helmets. Do you each mind placing one of these on your heads, nice and tight? Make sure it fits snugly. Thank you so much. Can you swap them on your heads there? Perfect. I also have some items for you to examine. Dylan, would you take a look at this rope? Just pull on it, make sure it doesn't come apart anywhere. Take a look at this mug, make sure that it's all welded together, nothing slides or moves around. And I'll take one end of that rope from Dylan, hold on to the other end tightly. Alex, would you hold on to this end? And my goal is now to take this mug and hang it on the rope by the handle without either of you letting go of your ends. Now, I think we can all agree that doesn't sound possible. But in order for you to experience magic, can you let go there? In order for you to experience magic, we are going to have to leave the two of you in the dark. <laughs> Literally. You all can't see through those visors, can you? No. No, see, these helmets are here to protect the secret. The secret of the trick. Alex, I'm gonna take one end of the rope from you, just one, and hold on to the other end as tightly as you can. And for a moment, fellas, can you just push up on those visors just so you can see the situation that we're in? Now, Dylan, with your left hand, can you hold on to this? You can switch hands there. Hold on to that as tight as you can, that end. You've got this end. Don't let go. You've got a mug. Here we go. Helmets down. Now, Dylan, if you don't let go of your end of the rope, and Alex doesn't let go of his end, there's absolutely no way possible that mug could end up hanging on that rope by the handle. But we're going to do it anyway. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Lift up your visors, guys. Take a look. Do you feel that? There's a mug on the rope. Hey, you guys can let go, let go. Look at that, that's really on there, yeah? Yeah. That was a joke that went over his head. <laughs> now, you can take that end, you can take this end, and of course, if Penn and Teller were to try to code that to me, they might say, they liked how the trick ended. They wished it had an extra end. <laughs> so we'll do it again. You've got a mug, you each have one end of the rope. Helmet's down. Now, this time, Alex, I'm gonna take the mug from you. I'm gonna hand it over to you, Dylan. Hold your right hand out. Hold it right there by the handle. Hold that right there over the rope. Now, Dylan, if you don't let go of your end of the rope, and if Alex doesn't let go of his end of the rope, there's no way possible that mug could end up on that rope with you holding it. But it's gonna happen anyway. On the count of three, I want you to drop the mug. It's gonna fall through the air and land on the rope and link onto it like magic. Are you ready? One, two, three. Do you feel that? Go ahead, take a look. Open up your helmet, take a look. There's a mug on a rope. That's really on there. You're gonna take that off of there for me if you don't mind. 
Fantastic. I'm gonna hold on to that if you don't mind. Fantastic. We're gonna put your visors down one more time. Thank you guys. Now, if Penn and Teller were to try to code that method to me, they might say something like, these two guys were duped. <laughs> so we'll do it again. This time a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do is have you fellas just open up your visors one more time if you don't mind. Just lift up your visors so you can see the situation. And now, Dylan, I'm gonna ask you to hold up one end of the rope. Now, I'm going to take the rope and thread it through the handle. And I want you to verify for everybody, you can see the rope going through the handle, yes? yes? Fantastic, would you hold on to that? Hold it right there. See, this time we're gonna start with the rope on the mug. And in fact, fellas, this time you can leave your visors up because this cloth is going to take the place of your helmets and protect the secret of the trick. After all, I can't leave the stage without giving Penn and Teller something to puzzle over. But this whole time I've been teaching you how to get a mug on a rope, I've told you nothing about getting a mug off a rope. And that is an entirely different science. And hopefully with that, you might understand some of those code words Penn and Teller are about to give me. Thank you. John Carlo Bonini, everyone. Come on over here, let's talk. This feels kind of like a Penn and Teller trick. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely inspired by them. I remember coming up with the idea while watching one of the episodes. I mean, I'm trying to thank them for the opportunity to be here in the first place and also just kind of share something that shows the love for the show. I started watching the show when I was in high school, so just being here is, is an honor. Did you do magic in high school? I did do magic in high school. I would try to do a magic show uh, in one of the classrooms during the dances. For all the kids who, kind of like me, weren't good dancers or weren't interested or wanted to take a break from the dance floor, we'd do like three shows a night. <laughs> and that's how I got my reps in. I, I learned how to work in front of a crowd. And it was, you know, I didn't have to worry about whether I had a date to the dance. And what kind of an audience were your classmates? Oh, they were amazing. They were, they were super enthusiastic. Giancarlo, yes. let's go to the boys. Penn and Teller, have you figured out the trick? Uh, Giancarlo, uh, uh, you know, you did. All, it, it's a great routine. It's a wonderful routine, especially for us. That's very nice. You did all the thing about me talking in code. You did all the codes, what we're going to do. So we're done with that. We're not going to talk in code. We're going to just lay it out right for you there, okay? And I, we're just going to tell you how we think you did it with no code at all. We don't ever do this, but you've already used up all the code, so we're not going to we're not going to use any code. Maybe we'll actually we think, understand we this We think one. that there's thread involved. You had an extra loop of thread, so it looked like it was hooked on there, but it really wasn't. It's that it's that simple. Is, is, do you have a piece of thread on there? There is no okay, thread Okay, involved. I didn't go yet. Um, uh, <laughs> That, I was just saying that's one way someone could have, but you had, probably they were wearing the helmets, not just for the visors, but that have earpieces that say, say, you know, act like it's actually on there when it's not. They have earpieces in there? There is no technology. I didn't think so. I didn't think there were earpieces in there. Because it's much simpler. It's much simpler than that. You just switch them up. There was no mug switch. There's no mug switch? Ah, you fooled us. books. Will history repeat itself? Before the night is over, we will find out after the break. <laughs> Rachel Lynn Gordon, and I just turned 11. When I was little, I couldn't say a word in public. I was diagnosed with selective mutism, an anxiety disorder that made life very hard. But watching Penn and Teller inspired me. I wanted to perform like them, talk like Penn. And we think that we thunk it. 
but not tell her. It took years, but slowly I went from mute to magic. First I gained confidence by modeling and playing piano. Then I found my voice in the lead in a Broadway national tour. Now I act and voice TV commercials and cartoons. So now, Penn and Teller, I'm the youngest ever coming to fool you. And Teller, don't give up. There's hope for you too. It's time to find out if Penn and Teller are smarter than a sixth grader. Put your hands together for 11-year-old Rachel Ling Gordon. Teller, I don't want to make you feel old, but you've been doing magic for almost five times as long as I've been alive. <laughs> Tonight, it's time you get fooled by a kid a fraction of your age and wise beyond her years. Teller, would you join me, please? As you know, Teller, one of the reasons why magic works is that people take mental shortcuts. They see something, make assumptions about it, and then jump to conclusions. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to do something impossible. Then I'll tell you how it works. And then I'll put my own spin on it. Here is one dot, four dots, three dots, and then six dots. Wait a minute, how can that be? Either I have a four-sided card, or I'm doing something impossible. How can it be that there's one, four, three, and then six dots? Well, let me explain. There's actually five dots on this side. When I put my hand here, you make an assumption that there are four. But when I put my hand here, you jump to the conclusion that there are six. Same with this side. There are actually only two dots on this side. When I put my hand here, you make an assumption that there is one. But when I put my hand here, you jump to the conclusion that there are three. By covering up dots that aren't there, or covering up spots without dots, I trick your brain into making incorrect assumptions. So now, you truly know how it works. Or do you? You assume you do. But you really don't. The reality is that there are actually six dots on this side and three dots on this side. Look again. Six here, three here. But there was never, ever no dots on this side and eight dots on this side because dots impossible. in a whole, whole, whole new way. Rachel Lynn Gordon, everyone. That was quite a performance. Oh, thank you. That was such a joy to watch. You're absolutely adorable. Thank you. I've came a long way. I did the audition when I was 10, and I just turned 11. I saw you waving to some people in the audience. Is your family here with you? Yes. My um, family from New York is here. My grandma flew from Singapore. Well, they must be so proud of you. And what do your friends think about you being a magician? They like it a lot. I do a lot of magic tricks for them. I even do some for my teachers. Do you ever use magic to get out of trouble in school? Well, I'm usually like a pretty good kid, but uh, I like doing magic because um, I love people's faces. They light up, and I just love surprising people. All right, Rachel, let's see if we can bring a Fool Us trophy back to show and tell. Let's Should see. we check in with the boys? Yes. Penn and Teller? Rachel, oh man, you are a cute 11-year-old child doing <laughs> a nice trick, and that is not 
why you are here. You are here because you are a magician doing a trick that we've seen before that you made changes to that we have not seen before. That trick with the spots is a standard that's been done for years, but you added a logic and a patter to it and an intellectual concept of teaching how that's done and our expectations that makes that really deep and rich. The way many adults do that trick, it is empty and completely devoid of meaning. In your hands, it is not. The other thing you've done is you've added an ending to a trick that never has an ending. They switch and all sorts of other stuff going on that's really, really nice and really good and makes that trick into something that is a really good routine. And I will say again, that is why you are here and not because you are 11 years old. <laughs> it's a fabulous trick. And I will say, even with the changes that you made that really are original, I hate myself for saying this, but I don't think you fooled us, but we have seen the future of magic and its name is Rachel Ling Gordon. is sailing your way when Fool Us returns. Take a night. Hey, welcome back. It's time for our next magician, and this magician is right on time. I'm Mr. Triton from France. I fell in love with magic when I was very young. I worked very hard to be good. I was a success. I performed for huge audiences. But something was missing. I had no character. Or rather, many characters. But everything changed when I found the hat. Once I found the hat, voila, I felt like a master. Suddenly, all my magic became more powerful. With the hat, I have won awards all over the world. And now I'm here in Las Vegas, where I have two goals to fool Penn and Teller, and to get married. After 13 years with my girlfriend, we decide to get married here in Las Vegas. I pronounce you husband and wife. Lauren, you may kiss your bride. Now, it's time for goal number two. This is already the best week of my life. And if I fool Penn and Teller, it will be even better. From France, say bonjour to Mr. Triton.
Thank you very much. You're welcome. You said that your hat is the secret to your success. Tell us about your hat. When I found it, it all became different. It, I feel it in the skin, the character, and feeling like in, I'm in 1920. It, it works even better when I drink some wine. Well, of I don't course. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Most things do. We saw that you just got married. Congratulations yes. are in order, Thank everyone. You very much. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> With Elvis. <laughs> With Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> no, thanks to Penn and Teller Show. So when I, I knew that we come here, oh, it's a perfect time to get married because we were together for a long time and this was the perfect place at the perfect moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Monsieur Fouton, let's see if Penn and Teller know anything about French magic. Boys? Yes. Très bien, très bien. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> so good. And one of the things that's so great about uh, your performance is the way it, it is a whole play. It's a whole story. And you also do something in, in magic that so many people forget to do, and that is have a clear cause and effect in a magical world. And you've seen the salt production before, but having that stop and start based on the salt shaker and the other hand moving is just uh, indicative of how brilliant this whole routine is. You've got the whole thing wired so that everything makes sense and you're using the oldest methods in magic plus for the film to life on the menu, the newest methods and you mix that all together in just this wonderful, wonderful story about getting drunk and ending up in there. And it's also so funny. Every single moment of it is funny and in character and you've created a magical world and within that world, everything makes sense. And we loved every moment of it, but we do not think you fooled us, we? I, I think you, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for. Mr. Triton, you didn't fool them, but they sure loved the story. Oh, they loved it. And they really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Mr. Triton, everyone, thank you so much. And congratulations. is right around the corner, so stay close, everyone. <laughs> We're back. Let's keep it moving and introduce our next magician. My two favorite words are what if. I grew up in the Midwest where people believe in UFOs. When I was a kid, people thought space aliens were carving crop circles into the cornfields. The crop circles turned out to be hoaxes created by bored farmers. Everyone was disappointed except me. I thought, great, people make the crop circles. And I made my own in the shape of a queen of hearts. Aliens, is this your card? I knew I was a magician then. I've tried to get on to fool us every single season. The trick that finally got me here tonight was my 64th submission. Like I said, I'm a Midwesterner. We work hard and never say never. After 64 tries, it's just incredible to be here. But I think I have a decent shot at fooling. Oh, I came to play. I definitely came to play. We couldn't get Joe Clubs, Joe Spades, or Joe Hart, but we did get Joe Diamond. Hello, Penn. Hello, Teller. Hello, Las Vegas. Vegas. Uh, yes. I am Joe Diamond. Uh, that's diamond as in rare, unique, and valuable. And Joe, as in average. <laughs> I'm right in the sweet spot. I specialize in magic of the mind, uh, mentalism, psychic phenomena. I'm not a medium. I'm a large. <laughs> uh, before we begin, I have to tell you a quick story. Uh, growing up, I went to a very religious school. It didn't take. So when I did card tricks, the teachers got seriously scared. Uh, I didn't uh, use any you know, marked cards or uh, special sleight of hand or anything like that. 
So when I apparently read their minds and revealed uh, their selected cards, some thought Satan must be secretly helping me. So as punishment, they took my cards away. Yeah, it, it could have been worse. They, they could have burned me at the stake. So tell her, uh, as a former teacher yourself, it'll be your job to confiscate this deck of cards from me at the end of the performance, okay? But for right now, could you cut about a third of the deck towards you? Okay, yeah, about a third, perfect. And Penn, could you cut about a third of the deck towards you? And I don't want to look at uh, Penn's card in a moment, Teller, so keep eye contact with me. Are the cards in front of you, uh, Penn? Yes, sir. Okay, could you take a peek at the top card of your pile, Penn? Okay, keep eye contact with me, Teller, yeah? <laughs> remember it. Once you remember the top card, Penn, show it to the audience. I do have to show it to the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was keeping yeah. it to myself. Okay, yeah, yeah, show it to the audience. Yeah. And put it back on top. Give me a thumbs up once he's done that, Teller. Yeah. Uh, Penn, could you shuffle that pile? I sure can. All right, perfect. Shuffle them up. In fact, keep shuffling them until I ask you to stop. I will. Okay? Uh, because I don't want you to think Satan is helping me, so shuffle the hell out of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, Teller, you might recall this is the top of the deck. So you know that I could know something about the first few cards, so shuffle them up so there's nothing I could know. Okay? And uh, Penn will keep eye contact with me while you do that. I'm feeling a tingling sensation. Me too. <laughs> I thought so. I think it's meant to be. All right, is uh, Teller done shuffling? He then? is. Okay, Teller, could you take a peek at your top card? Okay, Penn, you can put your cards down here for right now and pick up these cards and shuffle them, okay? Over the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah, shuffle those cards up. Make sure I don't get any glimpses of any of them. Okay. Once the audience knows your, yeah. Once the audience knows your card, Teller, Place it back on top and tell her, pick up these cards next. And just give those one more shuffle. Give those one more shuffle and drop those on top. Has he done that? Has he done that? Yes. All right, drop those on top. Yes, I will. All right, perfect. All right. Now, I, I know what you were thinking a moment ago as you were shuffling those cards. You were thinking, wow, this Joe Diamond guy kind of looks like a mystical James Corden. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also thinking about how you were sick of shuffling the damn cards. Sure yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Uh, so, I can honestly say at this point, I genuinely have no idea what either of your cards are yet. However, I'm going to try to figure it out using a skill I learned once I left religious school and went to college. Not clown college, Ben. <laughs> Card college. Could you please place your hand on mine? Yes, and concentrate. I'm getting, getting some Dylan, some <laughs> Tiny Tim, a couple George Carlin bits. I'm so sorry. Think of just the card, Ben. Okay. Just the card. It's black. Yes? Yes. It's a spade. Yes. I believe I have it. Don't say a word. Come back to you in a moment. Okay. Tell her, could you please think of the card and place your hand on mine? Place your hand back on mine once more, Pen. I have to be honest, this has nothing to do with mind reading. I just wanted to be touched by greatness. <laughs> I, I don't, keep thinking of your card. I think I've got it. I think I've got it. I believe this is yours. This is my moment of truth. <sighs> Tell her, I believe this is yours. And Pen, what was yours? Pen of Spades. trying to get on the show for a long time. Can you yeah. believe that you're finally here? I cannot. Yes. You said you do lots of mind magic. Yes. Do you ever do palm reading? Funny you should say, uh, when I was 14, 
Uh, I watched a, uh, a small little travel show that uh, you hosted. Yes. And y yes. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm 16 now, so it's okay. It's okay. Thank I you. shaved Thank the beard and I look the same. It's fine. So I actually paused the show at a point where your hand was showing because I wanted to read your palm and I wanted to see if we were soulmates. Really? Yeah. Can so, you read it again in high yeah, definition? Yeah, absolutely. Do I, yeah, do I want yeah. Then, may, 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 may I yeah, take it? Of course. Okay. Oh, this is right. so cool. Oh, I, I do see your, actually your soulmate is a, a slightly overweight uh, mentalist from the Midwest. So uh, the biggest thing I will say, you know, there's all the basic lines, but the one line you have that I'm not surprised by is something called a sister line. Uh, it just basically means someone's looking out for, for you and you have a very uh, blessed life. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Okay, Joe, let's see if your magic yeah. fooled Penn and Teller. Yeah. All right. Boys? Yes. Joe, this is really the kind of trick that I really like the most. When you said mentalism, most people think of that as ESP, but it's really a mind trick that you really have to think about, and it's really, really clever. It's one of the things in magic that is more fun to know because the intricacies are so clever, and then you put on top of that such a street top on it that no one thinks it's a math professor kind of trick. And I, I really like that, the fact you do it so so humbly and so I'm just an average Joe while you're actually having to do an awful lot of thinking. And you're a wonderful performer and we liked you right from the beginning. And you made that crack about me going to clown college. And I will say, yeah, yeah. I went to clown college, but you went to card college. Yes. And I don't think you fooled us. So, so the Schwartz is with you? Yes. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I had a feeling. I had a feeling <laughs> about that. No, no, I, no, seriously, because, because I had that feeling before I came out here. I had a, I had a premonition. So I, I wrote th this down before I even came out here. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so no, way, no, no way. I had the sense. No way you could have known that. Sense. I nailed it. And we enjoyed that so much. Joe Diamond, everyone. Thank you so much. Amazing prediction. So many magicians, so little time. In fact, we only have time for one more trick. So why not have it performed by the stars of our show? That's right, Penn and Teller perform when we come back. members of the Fool Us family, but some of the crew have been here for a decade. Our cameraman, Dave, for example. So as a little way of saying thanks, Penn and Teller are gonna do this next trick just for him. So here, closing out our show, are Penn, Teller, and Dave, the camera guy. I'm sure you all realize it takes a lot of people to do a show like this. Behind the scenes, everybody's working, and we have even nine camera people. This is one of our camera people. This is Dave, who's been with us the whole run of Fool Us. Now, Dave doesn't get to shoot the magic. He doesn't shoot the magicians. He doesn't shoot Teller. All Dave shoots is me. Dave sits behind one of those panels there. He can see through, and he shoots this. Whenever you see this shot, of me anytime on Fool Us, that's Dave. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if Dave got to see something else, if Dave got to see some magic? So Dave, instead of seeing this, instead of just seeing my face and my reactions and my smiles and my scowls, just this, we're gonna do some magic just for you. So now, don't shoot me, Dave, shoot magic. Keep your eye on the magic there. Look at that, Dave. There it goes, and it vanishes, and now, it's out of Teller's nose. See that, Dave? Pretty good. Now watch this, Dave. Watch his hands. You're seeing real magic now, Dave. He takes the egg and he vanishes it. Just like that, Dave. Watch carefully now. Hands are empty, Dave. Pretty good, huh, Dave? Pretty good. Watch this, Dave. He takes the egg. He takes it. You're shooting magic now, Dave. He vanishes it right there. Look at that. Look at that, Dave. Gone, 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 gone. Now watch this, Dave, as he takes it, puts it in his hand, and he vanishes it. Look at that, look at that, Dave. 
He's amazing, isn't he? Just doing that. Now watch this, Dave, as one egg becomes two eggs. Okay, he's, he's gonna vanish those. This is gonna be amazing. And he, van he vanishes them. Beautiful, now watch this. And now he's gonna come in real close for you, Dave. Watch this, and it's a giant egg, Dave. It's a giant egg. And now that egg is gone, just like that. Gone, gone, gone. There's still some eggs left. Watch this, Dave, this is pretty amazing. And now all those eggs, right before your very eyes, all those eggs, <laughs> uh, yeah, all those eggs vanish. And now, even the cloth over the table vanishes, and the table vanishes, and you're back to shooting a shot just of me. Thank Dave you. right there. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Penn. Thank you, Teller. And thanks to all of you. I will say, you know, there's all the basic lines, but the one line you have that I'm not surprised by is something called a sister line. Uh, it just basically means someone's looking out for, for you and you have a very uh, blessed life. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, all Thank you. Okay, Joe, let's see if your magic yeah. fooled Penn and Teller. Yeah. All right. Boys? Yes. Joe, this is really the kind of trick that I really like the most. When you said mentalism, most people think of that as ESP, but it's really a mind trick that you really have to think about, and it's really, really... To settle for the one to do a show like this. Behind the scenes, everybody's working, and we have even nine camera people. This is one of our camera people. This is Dave, who's been with us the whole run of Fool Us. Now, Dave doesn't get to shoot the magic. He doesn't shoot the magicians. He doesn't shoot Teller. All Dave shoots is me. Dave sits behind one of those panels there he can see through, and he shoots this. Whenever you see this shot, of me anytime on Fool Us, that's Dave. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if Dave got to see something else, if Dave got to see some magic? So Dave, instead of seeing this, instead of just seeing my face and my reactions and my smiles and my scowls, just this, we're gonna do some magic just for you. So now, don't shoot me, Dave, shoot magic. Keep your eye on the magic there. Look at that, Dave. There it goes, and it vanishes, and now, it's out of Teller's nose. See that, Dave? Pretty good. Now watch this, Dave. Watch his hands. You're seeing real magic now, Dave. He takes the egg and he vanishes it. Just like that, Dave. Watch carefully now. Hands are empty, Dave. 
Pretty good, huh, Dave? Pretty good. Watch this, Dave. He takes the egg. He takes it. You're shooting magic now, Dave. He vanishes it right there. Look at that. Look at that, Dave. Gone, 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 gone. Now watch this, Dave, as he takes it, puts it in his hand, and he vanishes it. Look at that. Look at that, Dave. He's amazing, isn't he? Just doing that. Now watch this, Dave, as one egg becomes two eggs. Okay, he's, he's gonna vanish those. This is gonna be amazing. And he, van he vanishes them. Beautiful. Now watch this. And now he's gonna come in real close for you, Dave. Watch this. And it's a giant egg, Dave. It's a giant egg. And now that egg is gone. Just like that. Gone, gone, gone. There's still some eggs left. Watch this, Dave. This is pretty amazing. And now all those eggs, right before your very eyes, all those eggs, <laughs> uh, yeah, all those eggs vanish. And now even the cloth over the table vanishes and the table vanishes and you're back to shooting a shot just of me. Thank Dave you. right there. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Penn. Thank you, Teller. And thanks to all of you for